4. God's Limitlessness The successive bestowal of himself upon the universes as they are brought into being in no wise lessens the potential of power or the store of wisdom as they continue to reside and repose in the central personality of deity. In potential of force, wisdom, and love, the Father has never lessened aught of his possession, nor become divested of any attribute of his glorious personality, as a result of the unstinted bestowal of himself upon the paradise sons, upon his subordinate creations, and upon the manifold creatures thereof. The creation of every new universe calls for a new adjustment of gravity. But even if creation should continue indefinitely, eternally, even to infinity, so that eventually the material creation would exist without limitations, still the power of control and coordination reposing in the Isle of Paradise would be found equal to and adequate for the mastery, control, and coordination of such an infinite universe and subsequent to this bestowal of limitless force and power upon a boundless universe, the infinite would still be surcharged with the same degree of force and energy. The unqualified absolute would still be undiminished. God would still possess the same infinite potential, just as if force, energy, and power had never been poured forth for the endowment of universe upon universe. And so with wisdom. The fact that mind is so freely distributed to the thinking of the realms in no wise impoverishes the central source of divine wisdom. As the universes multiply and beings of the realms increase in number to the limits of comprehension, if mind continues without end to be bestowed upon these beings of high and low estate, still will God's central personality continue to embrace the same eternal, infinite, and all-wise mind. The fact that he sends forth spirit messengers from himself to indwell the men and women of your world and other worlds in no wise lessens his ability to function as a divine and all-powerful spirit personality, and there is absolutely no limit to the extent or number of such spirit monitors which he can and may send out. This giving of himself to his creatures creates a boundless, almost inconceivable future possibility of progressive and successive existences for these divinely endowed mortals and this prodigal distribution of himself as these ministering spirit entities in no manner diminishes the wisdom and perfection of truth and knowledge which repose in the person of the all-wise, all-knowing, and all-powerful Father. To the mortals of time there is a future, but God inhabits eternity. Even though I hail from near the very abiding place of deity, I cannot presume to speak with perfection of understanding concerning the infinity of many of the divine attributes. Infinity of mind alone can fully comprehend infinity of existence and eternity of action. Mortal man cannot possibly know the infinitude of the Heavenly Father. Finite mind cannot think through such an absolute truth or fact. But this same finite human being can actually feel, literally experience, the full and undiminished impact of such an infinite Father's love. Such a love can be truly experienced, albeit while quality of experience is unlimited, quantity of such an experience is strictly limited by the human capacity for spiritual receptivity and by the associated capacity to love the Father in return. Finite appreciation of infinite qualities far transcends the logically limited capacities of the creature because of the fact that mortal man is made in the image of God, there lives within him a fragment of infinity. Therefore, man's nearest and dearest approach to God is by and through love, for God is love. And all of such a unique relationship is an actual experience in cosmic sociology, the creator-creature relationship, the father-child affection.